is so much to see, do, and eat at the 2023 Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. And today, we're doing it all. Come along with us as we check out everything that the festival has to offer. Including reviews of every single food booth. It's, it's Epcot, Epcot Flower, Flower and Garden! Garden festival. Yeah, yeah, that got part. my bracelet. Yeah. It's, it's Epcot, Epcot Flower and Garden! Garden. We are here on opening day, March 1st of the 2023 Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. This year, the festival does run through July 5th. And as you can probably guess from the name, it is a festival celebrating the natural world, the art of gardening, some of the beautiful florals. And they do that through gardens, topiaries, um, and of course, a lot of fruit and veggie inspired eats. There's also meat. Sorry, Breed Love. We have got a lot to do today. We are trying every single booth here at the festival so we can let you know what's worth trying and you can get a really solid overview. Or if you don't get to go, you can live vicariously through us. Before we get started though, gotta talk about one thing in particular and that is my favorite tool at an Epcot festival, which is this little guy. Every Epcot festival, they release a new Disney gift card. Um, they are wrist gift cards. You just put them on your wrist or Breed Love likes to put them on his ankles. You can load these gift cards with however much money you want. Um, and they work just like a regular gift card. You just wear it on your wrist and you can scan it at the festival booths. You can even use it in regular Disney stores or for other Disney things. It works just like any other Disney gift card. Um, the difference is it's just a little handier and a wristlet thing. I always do this for two reasons. One. This gift card is a lot easier to access than my cards in my wallet. And when I'm going to booth after booth after booth, I wanna be able to snag this quickly. Two, I know, for instance, if I put $100 on this, I know when I've spent $100. It's not keeping up with my math all day to see if I've gone over budget on how much I wanna spend on the fe at the festival. When this is empty, I know I've spent $100. And at that point, I can decide if I wanna spend more or stop where I am. Um, and of course, $100 is just an example number. You could put 50, you could put 25, you could put $1,000. I actually don't know if you can put $1,000 on this, but you get my point. It was really helpful tool when budgeting, especially when you're eating around and drinking around all day, you might not be keeping track with how much you're spending. My first booth today is going to be Brunch Cot. This is the only new booth at the festival, um, although it does not actually have that new of a menu. It's very similar to the brunch booth that Epcot Flower and Garden had last year. It's just called Brunch Cot. It's even in the same spot. The menu has some brunch favorites like avocado toast, shrimp and grits, lox benedict, um, and a fruit loop shake, which I remember as being really great for kiddos last year. Pretty long line for brunch cut this morning. That tends to happen with new boots and popular boots. And this one is kind of new, not really, but very, very popular. So long line here on the first day of the fest. All right, so from Brunch Cot, we've got the avocado toast with marinated toy box tomatoes. We've got the shrimp and grits, the lox benedict on everything focaccia, the fried cinnamon roll bites, and to drink the non-alcoholic Fruit Loop shake, as well as the peach bellini. Lox benedict. Mm. Avocado toast. Shrimp and grits. Fruit Loop milkshake. Peach bellini. Mmm. Cinnamon roll bites. Mmm. These are ridiculous. All right, Brunch Cot. This is certainly a winning booth. Nothing here was amiss. I really enjoyed everything. My least favorite of the food items was the avocado toast, and it was like a really tasty avocado toast I've just had better. The shrimp was awesome and perfectly spiced. The cinnamon roll bites were to die for, so decadent and sugary and sweet and delicious. Um, and I was even surprised by the lox benedict. I don't like lox, and I still found this delicious because of the combination of flavors that it had. Drinks wise, that Fruit Loop shake is a stunner. Your kid is gonna love that. I love it. I'm your kid, basically. Um, love the Fruit Loop shake. It's like super cereally, not overly sweet. Um, and the peach bellini was good too. So definitely a win here. Good job, Brunch Cot. Over in the Germany Pavilion at the Germany booth, the farmer's market, if you will, it is carb central. I'm talking potato, potato, strudel, and pretzel. I mean, it's, I'm, my little carb heart is happy. Let's go. All right, let's talk about these pancakes, because both these pancakes I was impressed by. They, they were pretty good. The applesauce, you can totally tell, is homemade. It's fresh. It's nice. And they've even got like just big chunks of apples in there. Now, I'm not necessarily a fan of the combination, but pretty good. Now, the caramelized onion and ham is so, so good. I could literally eat that for breakfast any day. 
The Danish is pretty solid. I did really enjoy the fresh mixed berries, uh, and it's great because uh, I was expecting a lot of sweetness, but it's not too sweet. There's some nice acidity in there as well. And the pastry was buttery with a good crunch, so can't, can't go wrong with that. I'm not a huge beer person, just because I don't taste beer that often, but unfortunately these beers are just pretty generic to me, except for the Raspberry Rattler. It was really fruity, refreshing. So as far as the Germany booth goes, not half bad. What's more flower and garden festival in Epcot? Been going on a flower and garden themed ride, literally. Living with the land. Five minutes standby wait. Two minutes. Two minutes, and we're on. Living with the land, got some gentle overlays, a little bit of theming, tying into some different festivals. And of course, it's gonna have a little tie in to Flower and Garden Festival. And the edible gardens are a really cool way to do that. Now let's go right next door. Butterfly Landing. excited because we are in France and we're going to the Fleur de Lis booth. Quincy tried to teach me how to say it in the car because she speaks a little bit of French but if I'm saying that wrong I guess you and I are just gonna have to go to Disneyland Paris and you're gonna have to teach me. It's gonna be a rough day for us there huh? At this booth you're going to find a croissant with goat cheese, a Provencal style braised beef with Nicoise gnocchi. And if you've ever tried any of the frozen slushes that they typically have here in France, they have a Le Vion Rose frozen slush for the festival. Sage has joined me because I needed some saving in, in terms of my fuel rod power bank situation, but here are my France final thoughts. Oh, I'm so intrigued. I thought it was an overall amazing booth because you have savory options, you have sweet options. I felt it was very impressive even if some of the options were a little heavy for the hotter weather. They're kind of worth it. I mean, do you want to eat braised beef in Orlando? Not really, but maybe you should. I, uh, listen, I'm not above a, uh, of a hot, a hot He's braised beef. He's not above a hot, a hot, a hot I'm braised beef. I'm not above a hot braised beef. Say hot braised, hot braised beef braised five beef. times. But And I will say, <laughs> shout out to Le Vion Rose Frozen Slush, okay? I had to get one for myself. It was, you have to try it. You're just going to have to go to Disney World and try it. Sorry, you have to book a trip. Sorry. Our next booth is Florida Fresh. This booth has a lot of those Florida flavors. Um, local produce is sort of the focus here, which I think is totally awesome, especially for this festival. Uh, they've got corn on the cob, fish sliders, watermelon salad, oh, strawberry shortcake, I love strawberry shortcake. Um, so a bunch of fresher Floridian flavors, which is really awesome. I'm excited to give it a try. All right, acquired our Florida Fresh haul. To drink, we have the cucumber watermelon slushy. I got it non-alcoholic, but you can get this with gin, which is awesome. Uh, they also have the grilled street corn on the cob. There are two versions of this. I got the spicy ones. This is a savory garlic spread and spicy corn chips. Um, both of the corn on the cobs are plant-based, both options of them, which is awesome. Uh, we've got the blackened fish slider here, uh, the watermelon salad with blueberries and some other stuff too, like feta. Oh my gosh, I'm excited about that. And this beautiful and huge Florida strawberry shortcake. This thing is really big for a festival food. <laughs> Florida Fresh, my favorite booth of the day so far. The flavors are unique, but still like super comfortable. Um, everything was awesome. All the ingredients are perfectly cooked. I absolutely loved the fish slider. That watermelon salad, they've had similar things at Past Flower and Gardens, and it is so good. If you like balsamic, it's so good on watermelon, and that salad really does it. Huge portion of strawberry shortcake. By far the star was that corn with the corn chips on it. 
Not spicy at all. This is like the hot and spicy version. They also have a not spicy. I didn't find the spicy, so I think you'd probably be fine. But if you're very, very versed to spice, they have a version for you too. Um, and this is so refreshing. Watermelon and cucumber. One other thing I'll note about the corn is that it is part of the garden graze. The garden graze is a kind of like progressive eating thing where you get rewarded uh, with a free treat if you eat five different items that are designated for the garden graze. The garden graze has a bunch of different options as you can see here. Um, they are all plant-based which is really really awesome. You just have to get five of these of choice. You can double up so if you just like really love the grilled street corn on the cob you can have five of those and you do not have to do it all in one visit. You get these stamped and when you get five stamps you get that festival treat for free. So we are going to aim to do that today. I'm going to grab stamps some from some of my friends and get that festival tree so we can show you what it is. Over in the Japan Pavilion, Hanami, that's where you're gonna find your sushi, your sake. There's even an entire sushi made out of fruit, in case you're not into, you know, raw fish. Come on. All right, first up, we got the frushi, which is strawberry, pineapple, and lychee wrapped in sweet rice and pink soy wrap served with whipped cream and drizzled berry sauce and toasted coconut, man. And then we've got the hanami sushi, which is assorted uh, nigiri sushi with lemon cured salmon, soy marinated tuna, and cured mackerel. And we've got the creamy shrimp udon, which is udon soup with shrimp and spring vegetables. And a little beverage, cause you know, I, get, I gotta have my beverage. It's their nigori dragon fruit sake cocktail. Now I want to start with this fruit sheet. It is a returning item from uh, last year. Let's give it a shot. It feels like I'm eating strawberry milk. It's very strange, but I'm... It must be the whipped cream as well. I'm actually really into it. Uh, you, you wouldn't normally think that fruit and rice go together, but it's actually paired really nicely. The textures are are not as odd as you think they would be. A big thing about the sushi, try and if you get it, try and eat it right away. They put this on top of the uh, sushi and it makes, it does make it get hotter quicker, especially on a hot day like today. Overall, the Hanami sushi is pretty solid. Now surprisingly, out of the tuna, the salmon, and the mackerel, the mackerel was the most fishy. Uh, if you don't like raw fish, if you don't like that fishy taste, I would stay away from the sushi altogether. It's not, it's no fried tempura or anything like that. It is definitely raw fish, so. There you go. And then the creamy shrimp udon. That's pretty solid. Out of anything at this booth, uh, this would be the thing I would come back to get. But there's still a nice little crisp to the vegetables. Uh, uh, the noodles and the udon soup has a nice flavor. It's creamy, it's, uh, it's seasoned well, it tastes really nice. So overall, out of the entire Hanami booth, the udon soup is definitely the number one thing I would uh, say to get if you're coming here. Primavera Kitchen in Italy. This booth has a fresh take on some Italian dishes. Let's check it out. So at this bit we have a Caesar con gamberette, tortelloni primavera, and budini alle nocciole. There's also an Italian margarita with limoncello and tequila. This booth really surprised me this year. Italy can be kind of hit or miss, but this year was a hit, so definitely worth checking out. We are headed into the Odyssey Center, which is this building out in the lake. It's also where you'll find first aid uh, any time of the year, but at Epcot Flower and Garden, it is home to the Citrus Blossom booth. So because Orange Blossom is in the Odyssey building, um, it's got some extra amenities that most booths do not, including a lot of indoor seating, some photo ops in here, projections on the wall. There is a souvenir orange bird sipper cup available at this festival. You just mobile order and when your sipper is available, you can come in and pick it up. And as you can see, there's no line because of that. There is a line, however, over for the food side of uh, Orange Blossom. Citrus Blossom. It's his fault. I was trying to say his name. The cool thing about Citrus Blossom is since it's in the Odyssey building, it's actually got a lot of indoor seating as well as a whole merchandise location and some photo ops, which is pretty neat. So worth stopping in here, even if none of the eats catch your eye. All right, so we have the orange lemon smoothie in a souvenir orange bird sipper cup. This is the beer flight. We also have the orange sesame tempura shrimp, the lemon meringue pie, and the citrus baked brie. So a very citrusy booth. First of all, I love him. This is my son. I wish I could put him on me like Emma wears Kermit. Orange lemon smoothie. Beer flight. Shrimp. Mm. This is orange 
whatever, and he cooked all the food at this booth. And he did a pretty good job. My favorite thing here was the shrimp, the tempura shrimp. That's like my favorite thing I've eaten all day. Uh, the baked brie was really awesome as well, especially if you like like a fancy baked brie. It was so sweet with all those fruit toppings. It was almost like dessert. Lemon tart, kind of boring. Beer flight, really good, especially if you're like a blue moon citrus beer drinker. And a smoothie, this tastes like creamsicle in a cup. I will drink six of these. I won't do that. I have a lot more to eat today. But pretty good booth. I don't think as good as brunch cup, but pretty good. Merch. Let's go to creations. <laughs> the famous or infamous Orange Bird Lounge Fly. Gardening Figment Lounge Fly. This one's starting to sell out too. Orange Bird Magic Band. Orange Bird Corksicle. Orange Bird Mug. Snow White Pin. Snow White Shirt. Snow White Coasters. Orange Bird Hat. Do I need that? Orange Bird Stepping Stone. Orange Bird Spirit Jersey. Snow White Apron. Snow White Wishing Well Planter. Snow White Gardening Gloves. Snow White Turvis Tumbler. Figment Shirt with that sassy little side tie. Figment Glass Terrarium. Orange Bird Trash Can that's secretly a salt and pepper shaker. Figment trash can that's secretly a salt and pepper shaker. Figment trinket tray. Figment orange bird and snow white crocs. Figment bucket hat, do I need this? Figment okay. flower pot mug. Figment t-shirt. Figment pin. Figment pin. Figment magnet. Figment magic band. Orange bird ears. Orange bird tank top. Orange bird shorts. Orange bird ornament. Orange bird ringer tee. Orange bird planter. Snow white ears. Pass holder exclusive shirt. Orange bird figment and snow white pass holder exclusive corksicle. Flower and garden festival garden stage. Okay, this was a shelf full of the Orange Bird lounge fly bags, but they seem to have been snatched up. A really nice leader just gave me a very hot tip that Odyssey is selling all of the exact same merch collections for Flower and Garden that are being carried here in Creations. Farmer's Feast. And Farmer's Feast is interesting because that's gonna change seasonally. Right now they have the early bloom menu, which is only happening from March 1st to April 8th. Then they're changing up the menu based on uh, this, based on the season, based on what's gonna be in season next. All right, uh, from the Farmer's Feast, I got the chilled potato and leek soup. I got the charred grilled bison ribeye, the spice cake, and the uh, very anticipated this year, Ghost Mary, which is basically a translucent Bloody Mary with Boyd and Blair cucumber vodka tomato water, horseradish, celery salt, and a hint of pepper. Whew. That is yummy. Oh, man. Wow. These are all really good. Interesting. So overall, the Farmer's Feast uh, did not disappoint. Specifically, I love this potato leek soup. It's super good, it's super creamy. Uh, it's a little fatty because of the bacon and the oil in there, but it's super worth it. The ribeye was cooked to perfection. The spice cake uh, wasn't as spice for it as, it as a spice cake usually is, but you gotta love cream cheese icing. That's like, it's the reason for the season, honestly. The thing that I wish uh, I would have enjoyed more was the uh, Ghost Mary, this translucent uh, Bloody Mary. I went into it with an open mind and it was fine. It was good. It was, it was more black pepper than I wanted. So if you like black pepper in your drink, you know, it's definitely more of a savory drink, if you will. Not super duper refreshing, but kind of a a fun breakfast drink if you're, if you're into a translucent Bloody Mary, which why not? If you've watched All Ears for any period of time, you know that I'm obsessed with this. It's a cookies and cream mousse that's actually at sunshine seasons all the time, but now it has a pretty edible flower on top. Let's see if it tastes any different when it's sold from the land cart. Now this is actually a parfait. So you can see it's got layers of sediment, mousse and like cookie crumble. Mm. This is here all the time, but I still recommend this number one. I like the fluffy consistency of the mousse. The cake is really delicious with it. It's not unique to the festival except for the edible flower and the fact that it's available at the land cart outside of the land pavilion. But I recommend this year round. Even when this festival's over and it goes back downstairs to Sunshine Seasons, pick this up. It is 
It is really, really good. All right, I am rounding up stamps so that I can get our Garden Grays completer item. So I met one of our fabulous off-camera reporters and she handed me this to try on camera to review. Uh, this is the Flower Drop. It is a Tito's St. Germain Elderflower Lemonade Cocktail. That's not what I was expecting. It's super sweet which usually elderflower cocktails are not. It's like Smarties, but it's not Smarties. It tastes like candy. It's very refreshing. Great for a hot day like today and like the rest of the festival it's going to have. I don't know, this kind of surprises me. And it's found in Connections Cafe. Uh, so one of those extra festival stops that isn't one of the booths. Our off-camera reporter also gave me another of her um, festival gathered items. The Spikes Pollination Exploration 2023. This is really cool. It's a scavenger hunt. And you purchase this for $10 at a variety of different merchandise stores. Typically, if they sell festival merchandise, they will have the Spikes Pollination Exploration 2023. And your goal is to find Spike the Bee in pavilions around uh, Epcot. Um, it tells you where to look for him. But when you find him, you get to place a sticker on that pavilion. And then when you're done, you get a prize. And this year, it's a super cool uh, like set of plates. I think there are eight different ones, which is awesome. We're not gonna show you the scavenger hunt because that would be spoilers and you wanna have fun when you do this. But um, just keep an eye out for Spike the Bee when you're here. You can look for him whether you pay for the scavenger hunt or not. You just won't get the prize. Lila Fresca between Morocco and France features taste from the Caribbean. For brunch fans, this booth also has a special breakfast menu. We picked up the braised oxtail with pigeon pea rice, the sugar cane shrimp skewer with Ben's original long grain white rice, the tropical breeze is our drink, and finally the coconut tres leches for dessert. This booth is totally worth checking out if you have a sweet tooth or love tropical flavors. The drink is very refreshing and that coconut tres leches might be one of our favorites at the festival this year. It's under $5 at $4.75 and plant-based. Here at the Mexico Pavilion at the, at the Mexico booth, you're gonna find a lot of Mexican inspired dishes that still go in line with the flower and garden theme, which is fresh flavors. So I got the quesadilla, which is with the house-made masa tortilla with squash blossoms, bacon, onion, zucchini, and cheese. Also, we got the taco with barbacoa beef and a corn tortilla with crispy grilled Monterey Jack, salsa ranchera, and esquites. Now to drink, we got the mala herba margarita, which is reposado tequila, elderflower, chamomile tea, of solo corn whiskey, UNA flour-infused vodka with a chili salt rim, and the cristal margarita, which is 100% agave tequila blanco, mezcal, Cal, clarified lemon juice, orange liqueur, and you get a little souvenir cup that comes with it. Well, because it's a quesadilla, I'm, I'm, I'm going hands, hands only. It's like bacon bits, but thick, like really thick. Now the quesadilla is brand new to the festival, and something to note about it, it is gluten and wheat friendly. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. That is the corn, I haven't gotten the taco yet. But it's gonna be messy, because I'm gonna use my hands. Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> this is so ridiculously good. Now when they say crispy grilled Monterey Jack cheese, I'm, they're, they're not just talking about the inside. The entire shell is crispy around the entire shell. The barbacoa beef is seasoned really nice. The salsa ranchera adds a nice kick. Now this is the mala margarita. Interesting. <laughs> you can't ask for it with no chili rim in case chili rim is not your bag. I get it. That's not my not my bag either. It tastes kind of like a normal margarita. It's it's a little bit of an earthy margarita, probably because of the uh, elderflower chamomile tea, which is an interesting thing in to throw into a margarita. It's a really refreshing margarita. You can definitely taste the mezcal in there, but it's got a citrusy undertone to it, probably because of the orange liqueur. Overall, out of the two margaritas, I really prefer the uh, Cristal Margarita. One, because I like the souvenir cup. This is really nice. The Canada booth is Northern Bloom right here in the Canada Pavilion, and it has a menu of things like seared scallop, beef tenderloin tips, um, and a maple popcorn shake. This is typically one of my favorite booths, um, but the food is heavier. The scallops and the beef tenderloin are both on the heavy side. We absolutely love the scallops this year, and that maple popcorn shake is pretty tasty as well. Okay. It is just is on the sweet side. Also, here is your not friendly reminder because I am serious. You have to listen to this. Epcot and Disney World get very sunny and very hot, so wear your sunscreen, but more importantly, drink water. All of the booths are going to have some free water cups. Make sure you stay hydrated because it gets it gets rough out here, okay? Now up next, we have refreshment port. Now this booth is a really consistent present at the Epcot festivals. You're going to typically find some kind of soft serve in a waffle cone, 
some kind of poutine and some kind of mojito, which is kind of what we're getting today. Not kind of, it is what we're getting. Let's go get it. So today we got the shrimp scampi poutine, the frozen mojito with Boyd and Blair rum, and the soft serve ice cream waffle cone. You can get either peanut butter, grape, jelly, or you can swirl it, so of course I swirled it. Warning, you might battle birds if you eat here. I can't guarantee it'll happen, but it happened to me. This is definitely not the flashiest booth because again, like I said, it's pretty consistent. You're going to find typically the same kind of item, some kind of poutine. If you're into seafood, you're probably gonna like that shrimp scampi poutine. And that grape jelly, peanut butter, swirl, soft serve might be a hit for children if they're super into PB&Js. Now, festival booths are not the only place you can find exclusive festival eats. In fact, there are fun festival eats around at extra locations as well, including right here at Refreshment Outpost. Extra items can be found at locations like Refreshment Port, Refreshment Outpost, the Land Cart, um, the Joffrey's locations each have a specialty drink, uh, the Funnel Cake Stand in America. All of these are listed in your festival passport, so you can take a look to make sure you don't miss out on any of the options. You might want to stick to the booths if you are doing the festival, just because we tend to enjoy the food at the booths a little bit more than those extra locations. But the funnel cake is always fun, and we're also big fans of the lavender martini available at Refreshment Outpost. Trowel and Trellis is hosted by Impossible, so it's a plant-based fantasy. You can see here is the menu. We've got the boneless Impossible Korean short rib, the Impossible lumpia, the chocolate cake, and that Twining's ice cream tea with cranberry and lime. Here's our amazing looking food. This is the boneless impossible Korean short rib with cilantro lime rice, danmuji slaw, and kimchi mayonnaise. Yum. This is the impossible lumpia with Thai sweet chili sauce. This is a chocolate cake with black currant ganache, mixed berry compote, and what used to be chocolate ice cream before I spent too long taking really pretty pictures of it. And then we've got this Twinings iced green tea with cranberry and lime. I got the non-alcoholic version, but they do feature one that is served with uh, lime vodka. The short rib, the short rib is really flavorful. It actually has some, some heat to it. I just tried a little of the kimchi mayonnaise by itself. That's definitely where the kick is coming from. Really perfectly cooked, delicious lime rice. I am went in with my fingers. That's really good too. Almost reminds me of something I could buy frozen and heat in my air fryer. Total grab and go. I can eat it with my fingers and walk. Okay, tart but not too tart. Slightly sweet not overly sugary at all. It's chocolate cake. Nice. It's moist. Yeah, it's a good cake. Plant-based, but it's ooey gooey and delicious. Up next, Cajuns, this is for you. We are at Magnolia Terrace. I'm not Cajun, but my best friend is. Magnolia Terrace was new to the festival in 2020, so this is a returning booth. And you're gonna find dishes here inspired by the Gulf region. Here's what we got going on. We got a muffaletta panini, some spicy chicken gumbo, which I'm really excited about, crawfish pie, banana foster bread pudding, and we got a beer flight. This booth will pleasantly surprise you. I wasn't expecting much of the gumbo because I am a southerner, but Disney had a pretty good taste. So I think this booth could be hit or miss for you, but it's probably worth trying out for that gumbo. I am not a beer drinker, but Cassie has invited me to um, to, to join me at Magnolia. To, to join you at Magnolia and the American Pavilion to try her beer flight. Just because I wanted a fuller review. Are you saying that I'm better at reviews than you are, Cassie? That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just, for some reason in my brain, I was like, beer drinker. We need a man. No. Which is not, that there, That doesn't make any sense at all. And we never saw Cassie again. Yes. So wh which one is this? This is the Central 28 Beer okay. Co. Pretty Things Ale. Pretty Things Ale. I know. I could not hate that more. Really? I thought it was very dry. 
It's it's super dry. But the icon is pretty fresh on the first impression, but then it kind of got more bitter in the aftertaste. It's almost grimy, but it's kind of fruity. And this is Wicked Weed Brewing. So def this is definitely a super light beer. My impression was it was a lot brighter and lighter than the first beer. It's just lighter. Yeah, it's definitely lighter, brighter. What is it? When you say, when you think of brighter, brighter, it was just kind of like a vivid taste. Like I just felt like you, whenever the like, other one was a little drier, and whenever you tasted it, it was just like a little bit more refreshing. Parish Brewing Company. I think this one might be my favorite out of the three. Is that weird? Yeah, that's how I felt about it. Yeah, I felt that it was. It was the others were a lot drier than this one. This yeah. one felt a little. This is more full body. It was, yeah. Next up is Pineapple Promenade. This is a pineapple focused booth, and guess what? They do have Dole Whip. Um, they've also got a spicy hot dog, which is less uh, expected. And this is also where you'll find the completer treat for the Garden Grays. I met up with everybody and was able to get five stamps, because we've had five Garden Grays items over the course of the day. Which means I can turn that in and find out what special festival treat we get. All right, here's our Pineapple Promenade haul. Not counting the completer, I'm going to grab that after I grab the regular things from this booth. Ow, I always scratch the hot dog. So we have the spicy hot dog that has corn chips and pineapple salsa on it. There's the pineapple beer flight, and you can see what beers those are right here. We also have a regular Dole Whip. You can also get a Dole Whip with Fanta, which is very fun. And then this is the Desert Violet Lemonade. This is a very famous flower and garden drink. As you can see, it is beautiful. It's got an edible flower on it. That edible flower was grown at the Land Greenhouses, which is awesome. Um, and it's known for being super, super tasty. So I'm excited to try that out. Spicy hot dog. Oh my gosh. Ooh, actually spicy. Mm. Festival favorite for a reason. Go Whip, which was um, more solid and is now a liquid. You guys, there are birds surrounding me and they all want my hot dog. All right, we completed the Garden Grays over the course of the day, a bunch of us did. And all we did with a bunch of us was we just got together and combined our stamp books and they uh, they let us get our completer. Lime Dole Whip, also plant-based, in this very adorable Garden Grays cup. It says International Flower and Garden Festival. And you also get a mix of wildflower seeds that you can plant at home. I love doing the Garden Grays. I also love that you do not have to do it all in one day. If you happen to have multiple festival days during your trip, I love that you can get five corns and call it a day and get one of these. Um, and I love Lime Dole Whip, so a win for me. Mm. That is the perfect completer <laughs> treat. Okay, so if spice and flavor are your thing, you might want to check out Tangerine Cafe. Overall, this booth is just kind of meh, except we really do enjoy those kebabs and this cake. This cake might be best of the fest, so maybe this booth isn't meh. Maybe you need to come here and try this cake. I am here at the Lotus House in the China Pavilion where you can grab a bunch of different things like chicken skewers, crab wontons, and even something called the Kung Fu Master. Let's go. Let's start with the wonton because listen, I love me some good cheesy crab wontons and these did not disappoint. They were as tasty as usual. And having the sweet and sour sauce on top, it was just delicious, literally so good. The spicy chicken skewer with creamy peanut sauce was, it was so peanutty. The sauce was really, really bold. Kind of over overpowered the entire thing. If you love a salty peanut dish, this should be really good for you. Next up, the pan fried vegetable dumplings. And these were pretty good, but uh, they were very small. The raw onion was very prominent in these dumplings. But honestly, if you wanted to, uh, you could probably take them off. Now the sauce was sweet and had a, like a slight tang to it, but the flavors were on point. And then the beverage, bubble milk tea. It's pretty good, almost has an Earl Grey flavor to it. It's very tea forward. If you like boba, it was very chewy and gave it a, a unique feel to it, if you know what I mean. Not a bad booth, but honestly, I'm coming back for these crab cheese wontons a thousand percent. So the Honey Bistro booth has chicken and waffles on the menu, which I am super excited to try as a Southern Texas girl. And we've also got pollinator flatbread, honey mascarpone cheesecake for something sweet. And for the drinks, we have a honey peach cobbler freeze and an alcoholic version with blueberry vodka. So if you're looking for a souvenir cup, you're going to have to get that orange bird souvenir cup, which might be for the best because Spike the Bee's whole story is that he was a bee that tormented Donald Duck. So maybe this is Disney standing up against bullying. Let's go ahead and try this booth.
case you're wondering, I am 120 bees tall. So now that that's out of the way, I think that this is a great booth to try if you want to try a variety of items in one booth. Because on one hand, with the chicken and waffles, you have something really savory and a little bit spicy because there's a little jalapeno kick in that waffle. But on the other hand, with the cheesecake, you have something super sweet. Now, emphasis on super sweet. It might not be for everyone. You might enjoy it if you really, really love desserts. But overall, I think that this was a really fun booth. I totally think you should try it if you're into honey. It might have some best of the fest picks with that chicken and waffles. The Garden Rocks concert series is back. You're gonna have a whole bunch of different artists coming to you, specifically over the weekend, like uh, Pointer Sisters, uh, a Smash Mouth. You get a lot of you know big names coming. But throughout the weekday, I think this is really cool. They actually have some really great local bands uh, and like different variety, different variety bands. For example, tonight uh, there's an all-girl band called Glass Ceiling. They're singing a bunch of awesome rock songs, uh, contemporary songs. And I think I even heard a song from Encanto earlier. So that's gonna be super exciting. If interested, you can also combine your Garden Rocks concert series with a dinner reservation. Now there are some specific locations, but it will give you priority access to the concert series. So for more information, check out Allersnet. In my opinion, there is no better time to be at Epcot than a flower and garden. There are just so many more like beautiful flowers and gardens, um, which I guess is maybe a given, but I wish Epcot was decorated for flower and garden year round. I love the topiaries. I love the floral arrangements. I love it all. Best festival in my opinion. And I don't care if that's an unpopular opinion. Guess what? I found my friends! Yay! How was your festival day, friends? Fun. Fun. Full of food. Full of We're food. A tired. Yeah. It was good, but I got a sunburn. Same. I ate some snacks. I didn't get a sunburn. The merch you situation this Oh morning. no, am I sunburned? <laughs> I'm sunburned too. The Aww, merchandise situation this morning sunburned. was pretty brutal. It was very competitive for that orange bird lounge fly. And I just want to tell you, some of you bought too many. Oh. oh. In my opinion. And then there are people <laughs> later who just wanted one to wear on their back. And there weren't any more. There yes, weren't anymore. officially day one, those wow. sold out. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, rapid fire, friends. Where yes. are you all? Yeah. There here. you all are. Rapid fire, best part of the festival for you today, Sage. Okay, my favorite part was checking out Glass Ceiling at the American Gardens Theater, all the live bands. It was awesome. What's yours, Breed Love? The Lumpia. The I would Lumpia. Have to say. Yeah, I know. Uh, it fried and sweet. Oh. And, and, and savory. All right, all right, Cassie. Chicken and waffles at Honey Bistro. My favorite booth was by far Florida Fresh, the entire booth, and also getting to do the festival with my friends, kind of. Yeah! Yay. Even though we, we barely saw each other. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. fun, though. Also, also fun. everyone that said hi, that was so fun. Like, literally, every, we had so many people that come up and said hi Yeah, to come us. say hi to us if yeah. you see us in the parks. That we was love so it. kind. Thank you so much for the love and support. Yeah. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch our perfect day in Magic Kingdom. See you there! Bye! Bye! Bye.